It's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the ASUS XG32VQ. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons, which are found at the rear of the monitor, along the right side if you look from the front, the various buttons here. There's also a joystick jog button at the top there, which allows fairly intuitive navigation of the OSD system. If you press any of these buttons other than the joystick it gives you a little quick menu. You can see the uh, that's the symbol for the main menu and then there is X which means exit, game plus which allows you to access these game plus features um, there's a crosshair, an on-screen crosshair, which they call practice mode. Um, some other people call it cheating, it depends who you ask. But you can put an on-screen crosshair on the screen. Um, probably not the best <laughs> background to be able to see this against. You can just see it in the middle there. And if you twiddle the joystick, you can move where on the screen it appears as well. And if you want to get rid of that, um, you can just press the exit button a couple of times, and that should get rid of it. So that's the green one, one of the green ones. There's an on screen timer feature as well which gives you a countdown in minutes between 30 and 90. Um, I think it's minutes, yeah. And, you can, and again, you can adjust the position of that with the, uh, the joystick if you need to. Um, there's an FPS counter, as they call it, and that actually gives an indication of the frame, uh, sorry, the refresh rate of the monitor. So it can only be used when the monitor is using FreeSync. So it's not actually an FPS counter; it's actually a refresh rate um, indicator. Um, so this can give you a quite clear indication of the current refresh rate or frame rate if you're running FreeSync. Um, And there is another setting related to that which allows you to show a sort of a graph of the frame rate as it uh, changes. There's a display alignment feature which is just for aligning multiple monitors correctly or uh, aligning other things next to the monitor correctly or whatever you happen to be doing. So it just puts some guidelines on the screen to help you align the uh, units properly. There's also G um, and this is game visual so that's the name that ASUS gives to their presets at the moment. As you can see various different settings there. Um, scenery mode, racing mode, cinema mode, RTS RPG. Um, generally these just upset the image. I mean ASUS isn't alone in having presets which give quite cruddy image quality. Um, I mean this scenery mode is massively oversaturated for example. Racing mode the default is perfectly fine. Um, cinema mode it just kind of looks again oversaturated. It's just a bit weird. RTS RPG um, again not so obvious on the video. It's, again oversaturation issues. Um, problems with shade variety. Same FPS mode. Um, SRGB, explore that in the review. MOBA mode, very interesting, very artistic with this sunflower background. That seems to just highlight um, red or orange colours and makes everything else grayscale. Uh, I don't play MOBA games, I don't know what the advantage of that is. Um, maybe that makes sense to some of you, I don't know. And this user mode, which just 
Um, it's very similar to racing mode, but gives you the um, a couple more options in the OSD, or at least one more option that allows you to adjust the saturation. And there's a there's also a a power feature which is quite self-explanatory. It just turns the monitor off, um, or turns it onto uh, standby really, and then the uh, the LED goes out, the monitor looks like it's off. It does draw a little bit of power like any monitor unless you're unplugging it at the wall or turning it off at the wall. If you just twiddle the joystick when you're not in the main menu system or any of the sort of quick menu system options, if you just twiddle the joystick it doesn't do anything. Uh, Samsung and some of the manufacturers actually assign shortcut keys such as allowing the user to quickly adjust brightness um, or other settings by just twiddling the joystick but uh, you know Asus have kind of missed a trick there they don't do anything if you press it in though you get onto the main menu system so there's game visual um, this has various different presets which I've already been through um, blue light filter, the low blue light settings there are four different levels, zero is off uh, one, two, three and four with 4 being the strongest, and on this monitor 4 is the only setting that actually does something useful, other than off of course. Colour menu allows you to adjust the brightness, the contrast, the saturation if you're in user mode. Um, Colour temperature, there are some different preset values. There's also user mode there which allows you to manually adjust the red, um, green and blue colour channels. There are three different gamma settings, which are explored in the review as well. OD, overdrive, the pixel overdrive or greater grey acceleration strength, you can adjust that between level 0 and level 5. Uh, again with increasing strength, giving more acceleration, um, this is explored in the review. Aspect control, which is greyed out unless you're running certain non-native resolutions. I think you need to possibly be using HDMI and some other stars need to align for this to actually not be greyed out. But basically, just don't worry about it too much. Um, it's, uh, it's just something that applies to some non-native resolutions or sources. There's ASCR, let's use Smart Contrast Ratio, the dynamic contrast function of the monitor, which is explored in the review and just an option to enable or disable adaptive sync, free sync, um, which you'll need an, a compatible AMD GPU for. Input select allows you to select the input used by the monitor. System setup, now this has a few interesting features on it. Light in motion, um, that is on this monitor there's a kind of, I'll just take my camera off the tripod because it'll be easy to show you some of these settings. Um, on this monitor there's a projection, a little red projector, um, which gives you a little rock motif by default, Republic of Gamers motif. If you set you, you set the brightness level um, one, two or three. So you can see there's kind of it looks more orange on the video than it actually is. It's quite a, a fairly striking red colour in reality. And there are various different stencils um, or, or lens types which you can apply to this. Uh, you can create your own if you're artistic as well and uh, want to customise it, or you can just have it as a blank kind of red light projection as well. I actually find it a bit distracting even on the lowest level, so I prefer to have it off, but it's a nice little feature if you like that kind of thing. There's another uh, feature, Aura Sync, um, I'll come on to in a little bit, or RP. <laughs> RGB, sorry. Um, there's a, a ring of LEDs at the rear of the monitor. These aren't bright enough to actually be seen um, against the wall, even if you've got the monitor quite close to the wall, as I have here. I know the room is uh, illuminated at the moment. I'll shut the lights off so I can show you this a bit better. But um, I just have this feature disabled simply because it doesn't do anything unless you are able to face the rear of the monitor or someone else is able to admire the rear of the monitor because it's just not bright enough to reflect onto the wall or anything like that. So I'll show you the different settings it has. You can change the animation pattern, you can also change the 
colour of the light. Um, the default is actually rainbow, which just cycles through various colours. There's also an information section, I'll come onto this in a little bit, but part of the information it gives you is the current aura uh, sync or aura RP RGB setting that you have enabled. So I've got it on rainbow at the moment. You can see the ring there. It, the ring itself um, cycles various different colours there. This colour cycle, which is kind of similar to rainbow, it just has a different animation type. It's a bit quicker, as you can see. And it's cycling. Or you can select the colour yourself, static, you can have red, green, blue, uh, cyan, magenta or yellow. So I'll just show you uh, yellow, kind of, I'm not sure if rainbow included yellow, I think it did, but uh, so you know, if you want it, one particular colour and staying on that colour. And again it looks a bit more yellow um, in reality than it does on the video, it probably will look a slightly sort of snotty green colour on the video. You can apply various different um, animations to it, so you can have it um, breathing in various different colours as well. So that just sort of gently pulses on and off. I've got it set to blue there, but you can have it set to one of the other colours if you prefer. Strobing, um, which is basically like a more rapid breathing. Um, so you see it kind of flashes on and off there. Or you can have it switched off, and it makes no difference to me, um, other than that it probably uses a bit of power, so I just keep it off, um, as I can't benefit from it when I'm using my computer normally. So I I mentioned before Aura Sync. Um, this allows you to control the Aura RGB lights, that ring of LEDs I just showed you, uh, using software on the computer. There's the software that you need is included with the monitor on a CD. Um, I know many of you won't actually have a CD drive. Most things are digitally distributed these days. Um, some of you might not even know what a CD drive is, but um, I've also given you a link to on the review where you can download the software. Um, all you need to, to know is that you'll, you'll need to have the PC connected to the monitor using the USB 3 cable um, into the upstream port of the monitor so that the uh, PC can give the right signal to the uh, lights to control them basically. And if you've got other AuraSync peripherals uh, you know the same software is used to control them as well so you can have various different uh, lighting effects on your other peripherals as well and your monitor can kind of join in. Um, I mean, yeah, it's a kind of cool feature, but you know, for most users, I feel it's quite normal to have your monitor against a wall like I have here and it doesn't really do anything in those situations. You can adjust the volume uh, or mute the, uh, the volume for the monitor. It has a 3.5mm jack, so anything connected to that. Uh, it doesn't have integrated speakers. So that's just to control the volume of anything connected to the 3.5mm jack. USB hub, you can have that on or off during standby. You might want it on during standby if you want to use the peripherals, um, even if the monitor's switched off or on standby. Um, and the reason you might want to have that off during standby is if you don't use the USB ports because um, they'll use slightly more power when the monitor's on standby if you have them set to on during standby even if they're not being used. USB setup, um, sorry, OSD setup. You can change the timeout period which is how long after the last button press before the screen um, OSD system automatically disappears or you can press that X button instead to just get rid of it manually if you prefer. 
DDC slash CI plug and play functionality of the monitor allows certain software to control it, um, control the OSD specifically. There's a transparency effect which you can alter. So you can increase the transparency level or decrease it for the OSD. You can change the language that the OSD is displayed in. There's an information section which just rehashes what's shown in the top right all the time, and I'll come on to that very shortly. There's a key lock feature which will just lock the OSD keys so that younger family members, for example, can't fiddle about and mess up your settings. There's a power indicator which you can turn on or off. Um, I should have really shown you that before at the start of the video, that's what I'd usually do. But you can see it just glows a gentle white um, and it runs from the front to the back of the screen. It's a kind of vertical slit design. Um, that glows amber when the signal to the computer's lost. Um, unless you turn the monitor off or put it on standby using the, the power button feature. Um, or if you prefer, you don't, for whatever reason, don't like it, uh, glowing when the monitor's on, you can just have it turned off and the monitor's on instead. It's a power key lock feature as well, which is quite similar to the key lock but specific to the power function. So you can stop people turning your monitor on or off, or perhaps uh, you accidentally pressing the power button, which doesn't generally happen very often in normal situations, but you never know. And there's an option to reset everything to the factory defaults. Uh, my favourites, um, I kind of have mixed feelings about this feature. Um, it, it allows you to store various sets of settings, so that's everything on the menu, uh, setting 1, 2, 3 and 4, so it's quite useful in principle. Um, and, I mean it is useful as well, uh, and you can easily recall them, uh, but the issue I have with it is the fact that they've split, split it out into, so setting 1, I can load my setting 1, Or if I mess some setting, mess about with some other settings and want to save, uh, save everything, you can save it. I just feel that the the way they've done it is a little bit convoluted. Um, so the way you have to go, okay, setting two, and you have to go load, yes. It's just too many steps. It should be something that we can. Uh, you should be able to recall your settings just with one click, really. Um, so they should have probably split it out in a different way, uh, but you know it is useful to be able to re to recall various different settings. For example, my setting two settings are actually a low blue light uh, mode which I use for the evening, uh, not when I'm testing, but just just for my own viewing comfort. And setting one, they're just my normal settings. So, I mean, I like them in principle, and they are useful, but I think they could have been a bit better implemented. So, finally, that little information section, uh, that shows you the input that's used on the monitor, so mini display port, which I've got it connected to at the moment, the current resolution and refresh rate, uh, the current preset mode, the game visual mode that you're running, what the Aura Sync feature is doing, if anything, um, and just the, a reminder that it's the ROG Strix XG32VQ. Um, interesting thing, the refresh rate, it's quite useful. If you've got FreeSync active, um, I'll just open something so FreeSync is used. Uh, but if you've got FreeSync active, it'll actually um, show you changes in the refresh rate alongside the frame rate, because that's what FreeSync does. So if you see that sort of going around all over the place and shifting so it's not just a static 144 hertz. It means FreeSync's active and it's doing its thing. You can see it's fluctuating a bit there. Um, so it'll just show you what refresh rate the monitor is currently displaying in real time. And I'll give you an indication of your frame rate if you're running FreeSync as well. So there you go. Um, I might as well show you just a final thing. I might as well show you the uh, FPS counter now because it'll actually do something. Now I've got FreeSync active and it's varying. So you can see there, it's uh, showing you your current frame rate or current refresh rate of the monitor and there's a little graph showing you little fluctuations, your short-term fluctuations in that. 
so that's quite useful as well. So that's really all there is to the OST on-screen display menu system of the ASUS XG32VQ. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that um, and information about how you can support our work in the description of the video.